on them. Watch out for the Mexican American Border Patrol officer. He's fluent in badge, gun, and pepper spray. Doze. Hispanics panic when I step to the mic to spit Chicano shit. Trace. If I stand on this side of the big river and you stand on that side, I can't see you unless you talk real loud. Cutthroat. The writer intended to convey blank here, but due to the limitations of the writer's language, Siegeld. That language does not make sense when that language makes, I will invest emotionally. Says, my son goes to college. I'm very proud of him. Now he's a comunista, and I don't understand a pinche word he says. <laughs> See it think. My father, nine years old at the blackboard, I will not speak Spanish in class. I will not speak Spanish in class. I will not speak. Outro. My pocho, tongue loss, a second language, me with a Spanish last name who can't talk Spanish. Nuevi. Whisper something sexy and dirty in my ear, something Mexican. Um, so, uh, another, I try to make this one short. Uh, you may have heard of the phenomenon, I'm sure you know about drug trafficking illegally across the Mexican US border, but there's another phenomenon that um, often takes place in which people. Um, will either be recruited or they'll seek out what are called coyotes and these people if you pay them like a few thousand dollars They'll smuggle you over illegally into the United States a lot of times people who are trying to get here for work or what have you um, will resort to re Relying on these people to, to help them get over here and they're they're shady people I mean, it's they're not any different than a you know a drug trafficker or what have you so sometimes what happens is um, they end up transporting people in the back of like a, like a truck, like a trailer rig, in really cramped space. And you can imagine, you know, in, in the middle of the desert, oftentimes people suffocate and in uh, the worst case end up dying. They found like abandoned trucks with dead people in them. So this is what um, that poem is, uh, this poem is informed by that. It's called Wild Late Capitalism. Crammed and banging against each other in a dark aluminum box. They drop like fleas or croaks standing six hours into the trip. A mother drapes her limp baby serape over the man's head. It nods back and forth with each bump in the road. Thank God the corpse doesn't smell. Warm piss and shit make bodies vomit on bodies the coyote can't unlock. Their trailer door, a woman tries to scratch a hole through the wall. She prays some phrase or word, some idea that resists translation into English. Thanks. <clears throat> this is called Amputee, etc. Nothing cuter than a war amputee, his limb not as fleshy ruin, but as fresh bouquet of soft tissue blasted with love through desert air. Nothing prettier than a deserted semi-trailer loaded with dead Mexicans, how their mouths fall open like little brown orchids thirsty for a breath of hot air. Nothing lovelier than a shy town cop who pummels a bartender one third his size. See his fists not as mallets, but as opportunity knocking her body again, again. Nothing sweeter than a white politician who plays the erase card when a black man speaks. 
like the weather, cultural imperialism gives us something to look forward to. Nothing truer than a poet who resists on paper. Admire his nerve to condemn from a safe distance where he can keep his shoes and his conscience perfectly clean. <coughs> A lesson in masculinity. <clears throat> she taught me to wipe the urine dribble off the tip until Poppy said, no, men don't wipe, they shake. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> My mother really did teach me to use toilet paper. <clears throat> Officer Friendly. Me and C walk the block when a cop shoots his spotlight in our eyes, when two more police roll up with guns and fear and get on the fucking ground, I do. But Z moves too slow and the sidewalk don't budge when they drive his face into it. A cop fumbles his cuffs, lowers his gun, says, wait. <coughs> That's not the guy. Sorry, they go and they flee. Um, let's see. Uh, my, my, I had a chapbook that came out a few years back, and when I got my author, or what do you call it, your author copies in the mail, it was really exciting time for me. Um, but they were wrapped up. In a newspaper, and it looked like a brick of like cocaine or heroin. Yeah. <laughs> and so, was, and, you know, that's kind of what this comes from. But also, the idea, at least as a as an American poet, or the wish that poetry was more relevant, maybe. So, um, this is called the War on Poets Goes On, O'Hare International Airport. I didn't get past security without them sweating my trendy carry-on, loaded with a two-pound brick of chapbooks, wrapped like contraband or a cheap Christmas gift. Unwrap it, he said, and I tore it open like a man-child, desperate for nothing but attention, half-fearing, half-wanting, a Gestapo bum rush in a dark room, that's right, man. You got me on possession with intent to distribute. I'm flying to New York with reified revolution in my bag. Haul me in. Deem me enemy combatant. One poem alone could wipe out this entire city block. But he didn't even flinch when he saw my books. All I got was, we can't let anything dangerous on. These are fine. Go on through. Enjoy your trip. This is a found form poem in the form of an um, infomercial. Um, it's called Commercial Break. Are your images inefficient? Is your diction bland? Are you tired of writing poetry that simply does not work? If you answer yes to any of these questions, consider what a Mexican can do for you. Strategically placed, a Mexican will stimulate and fire up your drab white poem. Here at Pretty White Poetry, we have an inventory of Mexicans in all shades of brown. Need an authentic indigenous tone? Try our mud brown Indian Mexican. Your audience will taste the lust in Montezuma's loins as they devour your lines. Want a little spice but not too much pepper? A pale brown Spanish concentrated Mexican is the perfect touch. Maria, tortilla, mango, trabajo. Just a sample of the hundreds of exotic words on set <laughs> waiting to decorate your verse. Even Hispanic poets sprinkle our Latin lingo into their writing. If our selection brings authenticity to their work, 
Imagine what it can do for yours. <laughs> Just listen to what happens to the following image after being pumped with a little espanol. First, the standard stands up. Brown at the stove, her skin shiny. The wind pulls bacon and eggs to my nose as I enter the house. And now supercharged with cultura. <laughs> Abuelita at the comal. <laughs> Her skin like café con leche. <laughs> the wind pulls huevos con chorizo to my nose as I enter the casita. <laughs> Pretty white poetry understands the difficulty of crafting well-paced rhythmic lines, so we've imported salsa smooth Puerto Rican vernacular to make your diction dance and your syntax sway. Don't worry about mixing Mexican and Puerto Rican imagery. Most of your readers won't know the difference. <laughs> Trouble with line breaks? Our Mexicans specialize in knowing exactly where it's safe to break a line. After all, that's how they get here in the first place. <laughs> Pretty white poetry deals exclusively with docile, safe language. Our words are edgy, but never make liberal white readers uncomfortable. That means more publishing opportunities for you. And our Mexicans are cheap, but always high quality. For here at PWP, our motto is, if your poem has Mexicans, you know it's gonna work. So my, these newer pieces are revolve around domestic themes because um, I'm a new father, kind of a new father. And so I'm at home a lot just thinking about being a dad and trying to be a good husband. So, Do um, you guys know what an impossible bottle is? An impossible bottle are those bottles where there's like a ship, in, like a big ship in the bottle and the whole trip is how did they get that ship inside of the bottle and you know, put it through the hole and then erect it. So anyway, um, I thought that was like a, I've been thinking about that as a metaphor for poetry and language. So, this poem is called Impossible Bottle. Wherein a magnificent sentence that can't possibly fit through, the tiny opening stands for the sole purpose of being looked at. And outside our house, a flower display or inflatable snowman during the cold months. And inside our house, a gathering of bodies entirely small when removed from the brick, the wood, the glass. The word love. I used the word love when what I meant was an institution once gave me a prize for writing a book full of untrue things. Lately, I'm more father than writer. When my baby points to things, I say their names. Dog, rock, airplane. Then I realize I'm only screwing up her head. called grass. Had we healed in time, maybe you could look at me instead of imagining another woman I can't wish away. When we finish, I take out the garbage because it's almost full, because that is my role. And I'm not coming back inside until the lawn is cut. Tell me, who else could edge the sidewalk so perfectly? In a few days, the grass will assert its chaos, and again, I will make it perfect. For you, I will pull each weed, lay down new seed, and come inside wanting nothing but a warm shower. Remember when we used to screw each other and mean it? And then the last poem I'm going to read is... Uh, It 
This is called Look. Somewhere close to a river, a collection of automatic weapons maintains an invisible line. Somewhere closer, a gathering of men have left a pile of parts, arms, feet, intestines, vaginas. They are what keep us listening at night while the rest of the house is asleep. Men like this, men who gather with their desires and their chainsaws. And when we look at our daughters, when they don't know we are looking, what is it that runs from the void of our belly to the veins of our throat? Thank you very much.